Um, And so I think it's awesome that he's teaching these kids manners. I think that you're right. He's talking about folks being privileged, but he's doing it in a way where he's trying to build empathy. He's trying to show these boys. Do you, do you not understand what she's done and how hard she's worked? She's worked at this school for so long. Her son went to this school because of like tuition reimbursement and all that. And then what happens? He gets drafted into the war because he can't get no job because he's black. Yeah. And then he dies. And you got some nerve to yeah, say well, anything. Kids probably should have been drafted as well, but because they have parents who are yep. rich and they're in school, they didn't have to. Correct. And so it's a little educational thing right there. And he lays it down and he stands up for his, his homie, his friend. Uh, and it was magnificent. The way he articulates himself, the way he verbally assaults people. It is the Hannibal Lecter of delicatessence. <laughs> delicatessence. Let me go ahead and cut, <laughs> cut, cut you off at the knees. <laughs> you know. It's never good when you're quoting Hannibal Lecter. And yeah, you, no. You're like, I like it. I like, I it like how you say that. <laughs> yeah. I'd chop his ass up. Mm. We make it enchiladas. All ass. <laughs> Enchiladas. All ass. Um, shout out to the individuals that do this, that hold mm-hmm. people in check or in line about certain things that are safe enough to do it. I was recently talking to one of the homies uh, when we were in Detroit, and homie's like, you know, and I'm like, here we go. As soon as you hear that, you know, and he mm-hmm. just starts going off. And I get it. Dude's like conservative Republican. I mean, it is what it is, man. I get it. Fucking hates Joe Biden. I'm like, I fucking hate Joe Biden. Um, then he starts going off on like queer individuals, specifically trans. And so we just had a really good trans discussion. Um, and I had to explain a lot of the pronouns, different things and how the media is overblowing shit too. And, and I was like, don't fall for this propaganda, man. You're falling for it. Uh, we're like, relax, chill. So we, we did a lot of groundwork. And I could have went in hot and heavy on his ass. But like, no, mm-hmm. let's teach. Like, this is my boy. Good person. Let's teach. So that way mm-hmm. he don't say something stupid to some other bigot. And then they're just like gassing and fueling each other up. I think, I think a lot of people will just go with things. But I, I felt it was going like a weird direction. If you're making some jokes, and, but, you know. It's like harmless, but you're being sarcastic. I know a lot of people don't agree with that. But if you do, like, I'll let something slide. But like, yeah, this is like the hard R like version of like transphobia, homophobia. And I was like, it's just not going to happen in my car, homie. Mm. Um, and so I just enjoy people uh, that have these conversations that are difficult mm. and check people on like different type of privileges. Uh, no knock if you got, I'm privileged as fuck. A nice house, car, money, RA. Like it's, it's okay to say you're privileged, man. It's not hard. Doesn't mean yeah. that you suck. No. Yeah. It's just that you've had it easier than others. And that's okay. Or you currently have it easy, right? Because I didn't have True. it easy before, but now I currently have it easy. Yeah, you've had it easy all your life. I did. <laughs> you did. You know, you did. I you did. were fucking <laughs> you're playing you. around, chilling. <laughs> I was. It wasn't going through any type of traumatizing events. I wasn't going through nothing. It was fine. I took my bands yeah, like fine. a champ. Yeah, yeah. The scars. Um, again, magnificent scene. Th- this movie is so well written. In the acting, you said the young man. This was his first acting get Angus. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has like other credits, but it's like nothing like feature length film. Yeah, this is like his first big movie, and so, um, yeah, he was picked out of uh, one of twelve people in this school, um, to uh, actually play this character and he won it and you see why he can lay it down boy i loved it yeah. uh let's let's get that on let's get that on over to uh scene three okay scene three um this so during this whole thing uh paul and angus um start actually start getting along because in the first half of the movie they just can't stand each other um but then they're slowly starting 
to actually get to like eat one another and things like that. And so um, takes to a muse uh, Paul takes Angus to a museum. And then uh, we have this scene where it's just talking about how the past can sometimes actually replicate in the in the future and in the present. Um, it's always there and he's trying to teach him this moment. He's having a very philosophical moment with him, um, which I think, I think we can all agree that the professors that really get us to think, um, and relate it back to where we are now, it's probably some of the best professors out yeah. there. Um, like philosophy, even if you're teaching math, I think you can always, uh, be philosophical and teach in different ways um instead practical. of just like you said yeah practical and then also not just yelling or just being passive about your teaching you can see the passion and that paul really loves teaching so you see it uh i wanted to do this scene yes because it's funny because there's a way to go about <laughs> things in life you don't always have to be this bookworm you don't always have to be the epitome, epitome, epitome of whiteness. Mm -hmm. So some knucklehead the other day we added on, on the Instagram and it was called the uncensored therapist or some shit like that. I don't know. Stupid name. Uh, yeah. But they're a magnificent individual. Funny as shit. They just got done watching blank man. They said from now on, if you're ever going to suggest anything for new guests to watch, have them watch that. I said, okay. I said, Dr. Funnies right. is awesome. They said, yeah, y'all are hilarious too. And she said she was cracking up on the treadmill. And there's a way to go about teaching or pedagogy, being a professor. There's a way to do it and make it super relatable, man, where it's a conversation. You know, my boys at the office, they'd be like, you know, Nas, if anyone can get through to the kids, it's going to be you. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and he was being real careful because I'm like, yeah, what you about to say, motherfucker? You about to say I'm, you about to say I'm ignorant, ain't you? Mm-hmm. He's like, you got a way at talking to people and getting all the information and therapizing them, but in this very casual like dialogue where you're just hanging out. It's you just hanging out with a kid, and then all of a sudden they get therapy. I'm like, yeah. Watch out for the funny guy. Motherfucker will get you. You know. <laughs> that funny motherfucker will get you, boy, I tell you. Um, I get your guard down. We have a conversation, but I'm like, dude, when I'm in there, I am like grilling people with questions. Like it's mm -hmm. fucking Tommy gun questions. Yes. And there is not a lot of accuracy too. It's straight up Tommy gun. You're just fucking spraying. <laughs> if you were a letter, what letter would you be? Kids like what? <laughs> what uh, uh, a Q seven. <laughs> seven. Uh, Apostrophe. Yep. Yeah. Um, and this is what's funny because he walks there in the museum and he says, hey man, what's that right there? The kid looks at it. He says, it's two people having sex. <laughs> we'll go ahead and pause the podcast real quick. Here we go. Dad. Uh oh. It's okay to talk about sex because we all have it. We all want it. <laughs> <laughs> we all have it, huh? <laughs> well, I ain't having it, but you know. <laughs> I want to. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I never like it. Hello, Bessie. How you doing? <laughs> oh my god! Put that tang down, man. Put it down. <laughs> You're feeling good today. <laughs> so, <laughs> how funny is that? Right? He breaks the issues with this kid yeah. just by bringing up some humor, man. And next thing you know, now the kid's like willing to listen. Like, soon as I swear in the room, because you feel out the vibe real quick, but as soon as you swear, you just see them breathe. Like, their shoulders drop. And like, oh, they're like, oh, I can fuck with Nas. Uh, everyone mm -hmm. comes in there really tense. I promise you, dude, as soon as I swear, everyone's chill. Um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, now we can do the real work. And so his way of going about teaching is magnificent. So now let's get to actual the meat of what he said. This representation of, I thought he was going to say, like, be, be in the moment. Like, the past is the past. Don't be in the past. Don't be in the future. But he said, no, the past is literally the predictor, is the explanation of the now. 
So they say, you always say you need to know your history. Why? Because history always repeats itself. So if you don't know your history, then you're lost in the current now. Mm-hmm. You're forever going to repeat the same mistakes. And so he's not, don't get it twisted now. He's not saying stay in the past. He's just saying you should know your history. Yeah. Because it will help you compute what's in front of you. That's why people come to therapy, Spence. Because they're missing some stuff and they're, they're not connecting the dots of what their past was, the intricacies, the traumas, the perfectionism, the middle child, the eldest child, right? The single parent, the adopted. Who knows? They, they ain't good. They're super bougie and privileged. There's so many different complexities that can fuck with a kid. And then they come to my office and I'm like, oh, there it is. And the kid's like, what? This Chicana said the other day, it was the beginning of the semester, I said, man, my last therapist sucked. And I said, hey, well, how, why? I didn't realize until I met you. <laughs> I said, what happened? She said, the way you psychoanalyze me was the craziest shit. And I've been through a decent amount of therapy. I said, okay. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes I just throw some shit at the wall and then kind of see what happens when I'm psychoanalyzing and trying to break stuff down. But I'm usually pretty right. And if I'm not right, then I allow them to correct me. Um, okay, now another pivot, and then we'll get to the next scene. The way he does his teaching in this moment, not maybe the other moments, but in this moment, it's very much a cultural thing when it comes to black and brown therapist individuals. It's through stories. Mm-hmm. People love stories. Motherfuckers weren't able to read back in the day, or were forced not to read back in the day, not to get educated in old times, slavery times. And so you see this illiteracy that's been held against a lot of folks and stories were the way that we taught and the way our cultures were passed down from generation to generation. 